And we'll be also talking about, you know, the, the delivery of the 2025 budget vote for science and innovation in Parliament earlier this week. And we saw Minister uh, Blade in Zimanda highlighting its delivery against the background, uh, you know, of a complex set of national and global challenges, some which include economic stagnation, uh, you know, the rising social inequality. And uh, there's also concerns with regards to the fact that, you know, science and technology and innovation are at the center of government, education, industry trends, and society. And if South Africa, uh, you know, is to ride onto this wave and uh, secure its sovereignty and uh, future sustainability, what is it that we need to consider and uh, take into consideration? Well, I do. Um, I'm getting advisory that uh, our guest is now uh, being re uh, reconnected. Uh, Professor, please do acknowledge if you can hear me. Good evening and welcome. Thank you very much. I can hear you. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much for joining us. First of all, uh, Prof, as um, artificial intelligence and robotics evolve at a rapid pace globally, including here in Africa, what are your reflections on Africa's current position in this technological shift? And are we really at a risk of being left far too behind? Yeah, I think uh, we are the best place we can be across. Uh, if you look at the history that we have had, we've had it very rough. Mm. I can hear you. Okay. Okay. What then do you see as the biggest structural or even systemic barriers, as it were, that prevent African countries, South Africa included, from competing at a global level in robotics and AI development? So, like I was saying, I think Africa is ready now. Uh, in previous years, we were not ready because we were dealing with other issues, we were colonized, we, we didn't have our own will uh, several times. But right now, I think we are the perfect space we can be. Um, speaking about robotics, we have to, we cannot detach it from computation. Mm. So computation, let's start there. We, have, we are lucky to have a lot of people that have done work in that space. So we have people that have created operating systems, uh, bricks, uh, we like to call them, uh, which are like uh, robotic kits and yeah. things that we can customize for African context. Do not forget, we are not going to reinvent the wheel. That's not what Africa is looking to do. Africa is looking to take whatever exists and customize it for our own good. And also, Africa is looking to then maybe invest in our own future in terms of infrastructure and all of those things. Yeah. And I suppose that's a subject for another discussion. Why Africa is not reinventing the wheel and, uh, you know, uh, writing its own story when it comes to the evolution of artificial intelligence. But in your role then, advising on AI applications, how do you evaluate the balance between importing technologies on the one hand and building local capacity to create AI solutions that are better suited for African realities? Now back to my point. Yes, yes, yes. I love that. And I think for Africans, the point is always been around our context, isn't it? Uh, yes. It's not so much about when we're not looking to compete with someone uh, in terms of if we are better than them or they're better mm. than us. We mm. want our AI to sound like us, look like us, uh, solve our own problems, isn't it? Yes. So I think in that context, we can use every infrastructure that exists from... Um, from, from Adam, uh, we're not trying to uh, be political about it. Yes. And then we're looking about uh, at con customization, uh, what we would like to call decolonization. Sometimes I know it's, uh, sometimes it's a political topic, but we are looking at bringing in our own context, our languages, uh, the things we do, the way we do it, our data set into training those models to giving us a pan-African, a truly African AI, mm. something that we, we, we can speak to and can sound like us and, and give us solutions that could solve our own local problems. You know, Prof, there's been a lot of policy talk around the fourth industrial revolution in South Africa, but what really is holding us back from moving from theory to wide-scale implementation, particularly in AI and robotics? Yeah, nothing is holding us back. I think uh, when it comes to policy talk, uh, I would like to say there's a lot of effort from different governments across the continent. Mm -hmm. um, we just need now to take it from the point of talk to point of implementation. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Make no mistakes, our educational systems are still lagging behind. Our, our establishments don't have enough computational power to do the things we wrote in those policies. 
Um, so we are still kind of behind in terms of implementation, but the 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 talk itself, the policy itself, it's it's a it's a it's a first step to what what we need to do and where we need to be. Mm. So I, I think it's a great way to start. And I always kind of caution Africans when we dream. Uh, we are behind. We knew it when we started. So we, uh, it's okay to partner. Uh, partnership is, I think, is the way to go with Asia, America, whoever is willing to talk to us and then to get started. And then at that point, we can then become our own powerhouse ourselves. We can discover things that are only our data sets can tell us. Because I'll leave you with this. There's only one thing that we have that nobody has. Mm. African data set is unique. Uh, right. Nobody right. knows our grandmother's stories. Nobody knows all of those things we know for ourselves in a large quantity. Uh, I think that is one of the things that we would use for the future. And I suppose it speaks to the point as I wrap the interview, the point that I, I was about to ask you, but you're unfortunately out of time uh, when it comes to, you know, the key drivers of AI access gap in South Africa and how we can start closing that gap right now, not in the next 10 years. But uh, Prof, great chatting to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you.